It is right. wonderful to see everybody here <laughs> and see everyone logging in. All right, so it does look like uh, we did start recording this webinar. So why don't we go ahead and sort of get started. Um, so as uh, Kathleen said, welcome to all of you that are just joining. Um, you are here for our Let's Get Smarter About Growing Older webinar. Um, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, you are all on mute, um, so we won't be able to hear your questions if you ask them out loud, um, but we do have a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen, so feel free to type in any questions you have during the presentation. We'll also be asking questions um, at the end, so if something comes up, feel free to just write it in that box. Um, we will see it. Uh, as well as any suggestions. You know, we're always looking for feedback on how to improve, how to do this webinar better. So any suggestions, any feedback is more than welcome, okay? And then lastly, you know, if there's a topic that you'd like to hear on a future webinar or in-person event, uh, let us know. You know, we're always looking for new ideas and would love to make it happen. Yeah, we would love to hear your input on how you received this presentation and what else you're curious about. So um, put those in anytime on the Q&A. <laughs> and if you are just joining us, feel free to let us know where you're Zooming from. Yeah. So just a little bit about um, Riverwoods, uh, who is hosting this webinar. Um, my name is Katie Hendrickson. I am one of the senior living sales uh, counselors at Riverwoods in Manchester. Um, but we actually have three communities under the Riverwoods name. Um, our first community was Riverwoods Exeter. Uh, this came about by two ladies sitting at a breakfast table um, who wanted, you know, the ability to be independent and active, but also have health care if they needed it. Um, so they created Riverwoods Exeter in the early 90s um, and then came along Riverwoods Manchester. Uh, that building is uh, roughly 30 years old, but has been a uh, Riverwoods community for about 60 years now. And then Riverwoods Durham is our newest community, uh, roughly three to four years old. Um, so the Exeter campus has three buildings, uh, Woods, uh, Ridge, and Boulders campus. Um, Manchester and Durham are one building. And Clearly, you can see that the uh, person who is running this is having a little challenge <laughs> with the slides, but you may wonder what our communities are, and Katie's going to explain what a continuing care retirement community is. Absolutely. So continuing care, uh, also known as a CCRC, um, can be thought of as sort of an insurance product. You know, it is... Uh, essentially, you know, a peace of mind for yourself, as well as, you know, your family as well, uh, that you will have care if and when you find yourself needing it. So our contracts are regulate, regulated by the state. Um, we also, you know, report our performances every year um, financially. And sort of what you're doing is essentially prepaying or insuring uh, for any care that you may find yourself needing, whether that's assisted living, memory support, nursing support, whatever it may be. It doesn't mean that you need it now, but it means that you have that available to you. Um, so in our contract, um, you have an entrance fee and a portion of that, as well as your monthly fee is deductible on your taxes. Um, another way of thinking about a CCRC is it's also, you know, a lifestyle choice. Um, it's you being in charge of how your future is going to be laid out. So you come into the community when you're independent um, and maintain that independence, <laughs> even if your, your living situation is, is different than the house you're living in before. Um, so, you know, it's exactly the same lifestyle, just without sort of the nitty gritty tasks. You're not go getting up on a ladder to clear leaves from your gutters. You're not going out in the snowstorm to clear off your car, things like that. Um, some things we offer are transportation, um, whether it's just around the community to different events in the cities, whatever it may be, um, a full range of uh, 
events and activities and lectures, et cetera, um, as well as the ability to have the whole community of people um, around you. So a significantly increased social pool, um, you know, new friends, new acquaintances, all that good stuff. Um, and as I said earlier, you know, it's really you being in control of how you want to spend your life. Okay, sorry about this. I am okay, having some challenges, but now. <laughs> so now I get to introduce Kathleen. <laughs> so <laughs> Kathleen Toomey is our presenter today. Uh, she is our Vice President of Marketing for Riverwoods. Um, she has over 30 years in the field of marketing, advertisement, public relations, but has over 14 years with Riverwoods specifically. Um, so she has hosted TED Talks and um, she has given many presentations, you know, on this topic. Um, but, you know, she's a graduate of Fordham and Fairfield University um, and has worked for a variety of companies over the year and just done an amazing job with, with this field of work. Um, so she is going to talk about her podcast, Seniority Authority, and everything she has learned while, you know, interviewing experts. Thank you so much, Katie. And thanks everybody for joining um, and for being interested in this topic. Um, as Katie talked about, uh, we work for Riverwoods, which is a continuing care retirement community, a nonprofit CCRC. And I've been doing this for actually over 15 years. And the more time I've spent at Riverwoods, the more I realize that we need to change the way the world thinks about aging right now. We are lucky enough to be in this blossoming of life. We are all living longer. So the world has changed for us, but the assumptions that we have about older adults have not changed they're all outmoded. Um, and the more I got involved in talking to folks like you who are thinking about a CCRC, the more I realized that we really need to help people get smarter about growing older. Um, I have been opening minds to the CCRC concept, which is, I think, a great way to age because you stay in control of the choices that are important to you in your life. And you have this beautiful community of folks to meet new opportunities uh, to grow individually. Um, and I think it's a great way to be older. However, I also know that people think in outmoded ways about aging. So I started getting passionate about this. And um, in 2017, I was lucky enough to be selected to do a TEDx talk in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, which is where our local um, TED community is. And I wanted to talk about the way we think about aging, to change the way we think about aging, but that wasn't enough. That happened in 2017. In 2018, 2019, people started coming up to me, friends of mine started coming up to me and asking me questions about getting older. So they would say, they had nothing to do with the CCRC. They would come up to me and say, I think that my mom may have dementia, but maybe it's actually just regular memory loss. How do I know the difference? They would say, I think that my aunt needs assisted living. What is assisted living? And how do I know if it's a good place? And I'm in marketing, right? I am not a medical person, but I'm very persistent and I'm very curious. And so I started tracking down the people that I knew who would give the answers to those questions. And then I thought, if I'm getting questions like this from my friends, I bet a lot more people have the same questions because today in the United States, we have 10,000 people every single day turning 65. And that is going to continue for 18 years. We have this explosion of aging adults and they all have questions and there are new opportunities and options that we've never had before. So I decided to start a podcast 
I knew nothing about podcasts and I still know minimally a little, a little a tiny bit more. My podcast is called Seniority Authority. You can find it if you type in senioryauthority.org because we're a nonprofit um, into your search bar and it's on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iTunes, pretty much anywhere you can listen to a podcast. It started in April of last year and I had a lot of help with folks here who helped me launch it and get the technology and the equipment that you see there. And what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna do a quick lightning round of seniority authority highlights. I'm gonna go through with you some of the episodes of the 34 that we've published to date and give you a snapshot of what we're learning. And all of this, should have some practical information for for each of you. So you can either write it down or you can wait for the recording of this of this uh, seminar. It will come to you. At the end of what I'm going to go through, I'd like to ask you a favor. I'd like for you to tell me what your questions are about aging that you would like to have answered so that I can track down more experts. So how is it going so far? We have 33,000 views on YouTube, 14,000 downloads. Um, the podcast is uh, accessible nationally and we have most people uh, are coming from New England, California and the Midwest that are listening. You have We have a 3,000 uh, person newsletter uh, list, which you can join at the end of this program. If anyone is interested in joining our newsletter, um, please put your email in the Q&A and we will add you to our email list. We're also on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and this summer we are going to be on TikTok, um, which is going to be an adventure in and of itself. We drop episodes every two weeks. So every two weeks, there's a new expert that I am interviewing. Um, and so far, here's a handful of the folks that I've talked with. Most of them are nationally recognized. I've done, as I said, 34 of these episodes so far. I've done bonus episodes when I have an opportunity. Uh, Andrew Steele is a London writer who wrote a book uh, called Ageless about uh, the new science of gene splitting. So he's on. Bonnie Waddles works with Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen has a charity dedicated towards um, early onset dementia. So that's included. Part of um, uh, our episode includes clips from Seth. So let's start out. Let's just jump into this lightning round of seniority authority. My very first podcast interview um, is one of my favorites. It is uh, Dr. Bob Waldinger, um, who runs Harvard's uh, Adult Center for um, uh, Study for Adult Development. He is the current director of what has been an 83-year-old study, started in the 1950s. And Harvard was looking for trying to isolate what the key is to a long, happy, and healthy life. And they started by following a cohort of Harvard men because those are the only people that went to Harvard in those days. And they also paired it with a Gluck study who was looking at the same thing, who were focusing on men who did not have the opportunity to go to college, men from um, urban Boston. They combined these two studies and they looked at everything. They looked at marital status, financial success, children, spiritual practice, fitness. Um, they counted how many books there were in their um, homes to try to understand what the key is. And they decided it was one thing. This is Harvard, 83 year study. They concluded one thing made the difference. Good relationships keep us happier and healthier, period. 
Now, when I dug deeper with Dr. Waldinger, I said, does that mean that if you are not married, that you cannot be as happy as someone who's married? Um, if you do not have children, does that affect it? And he said, no, it is the relationships in our life, which are both the deep relationships, the people that you count on when things are the worst that you can call, as well as the peripheral relationships, the, the mail carrier's name, knowing who, who you buy your coffee from, saying hello to people that you pass while you're walking your dog. It is multi-layered. It's connecting us to the fabric of those around us. So that is really important. What's next for this Harvard study? Well, they have a roadmap program and Riverwoods piloted the roadmap program this past January with a number of what we call future residents, people that have signed up to join Riverwoods and are waiting for an opportunity to move in. Um, this roadmap program took people through a very extensive way of looking at their life and it was really exciting. And they're gonna be bringing this out to the public in the near future. The next really interesting uh, conversation I had, or one of the next interesting conversations was episode 29, Sarah Zeff Gever. She's the pioneer when it comes to solo aging. And you might think, what are solo agers? They are people who are single as they are growing older, either through de death, divorce, they never married, they never had children. They are living alone and as I think this audience knows, but if you don't know, in addition to be, there being more of us than ever before um, growing older, so as I said earlier, 10,000 people every day and turning 65 in the United States, that continues for the next 15, 18 years. This is the baby boomer generation aging into retirement. And we have an outmoded way of thinking. At 65, most of us will live 20 more years. So those of us who are buying birthday cards for 40-year-olds where it's doom and gloom, that's outmoded. That's like listening to eight-track tapes. We are all living longer. So what does that mean? It means it's incumbent upon us to plan for that longer life, to decide how we want to spend those next 20 years. So it's an opportunity to define what's important. Prior generations, our grandparents did not have this opportunity. They did not have this opportunity. We do. We are the first generation that has the opportunity to live this long. So let's make the most of it. Let's plan ahead. Let's be specific about what we want to do with that time. In 1940, when Social Security was enacted, the average life expectancy was 65. We were working more physical jobs then. We didn't live as long. We didn't have the medical advantages that we have today. So we have the opportunity and the responsibility to plan for it. Solo agers are increasing. So there are more people who are older alone. And what's important for them is to plan ahead and to avoid isolation. Because today, loneliness is an epidemic among older adults. I didn't say being alone. Being alone and being lonely are two different things. But there is an epidemic prior to the pandemic of loneliness and we need that social interaction. So it's really important if you're a solo ager to plan for that so you're not trapped in that isolation. Well, what else happens when we live longer? We accumulate more stuff. So we have some advantages of being in this modern world. We have some disadvantages. One of them is that we have a lot of stuff. We have more stuff than we've ever had before. And what I have seen in my 15 years at Riverwoods is that people let stuff dictate their lives. I talked to Kate Grondon, who was a downsizing expert. And 
she has a booming business. Yes, there are actual downsizing experts in the country, um, and we can direct you to them if you'd like. Just pop a, a question in the chat. The reason there are downsizing experts is because people have a hard time letting go of their things. And as we get older, we do experience more loss in multiple ways. So it makes sense that we might want to hang on to what we can. However, hanging on to stuff doesn't make your life bigger. You have an opportunity to live a bigger life once you let go of some of your stuff. So listen to episode six, sign up for Seniority Authority. We have some great tools to help get you started. And don't feel badly about it being difficult. Of everyone that I talk to, almost everyone at any age says they have too much stuff. You would be surprised at how enlightening it is to let go of some of that stuff because then you're not focused on your stuff you're focused on your life put more time into your relationships another thing we tackle at seniority authority is understanding the terminology in this new getting older world so one of the best episodes is episode seven with cindy martin who is a long-term care nurse leader. She is here at Riverwoods. And she explains to our listeners the difference between assisted living, memory support, and nursing care. When you are in a crisis or when you need to find help for yourself or someone you love, it's really important to understand the terminology so that you know where to go. We have, this happens to us at Riverwoods often. At Riverwoods as a CCRC, you need to enter our community when you are independent and you don't need help. Once you're there, you can progress through assisted living, memory support and nursing care throughout your lifetime. We provide all of that to you within our communities. But if you are looking specifically for assisted living or memory support or nursing care, it's really important that you know what you're looking for so that you don't waste time, you go where you're gonna need the help. Many people refer to activities of daily living as a way of determining what help you might need. Activities of daily living are just what they sound, eating, dressing, bathing, toileting, taking, transferring in and out of bed. If you need help with those activities that you need for daily life, then that's an assisted living level. If you're fine on your own, you don't need assisted living. Memory support means assist all the activities of daily living, as well as cueing or reminding people when they need to have a meal, um, when they need to get up. And there are special programming that helps for dementia care in memory support. And nursing care is a higher level of care. It's also as um, activities of daily living, but it is more one-on-one -on -one help, more nurse intensive or LNA intensive help. Um, some people use the term skilled nursing. That relates to Medicare terminology. So Medicare will cover skilled nursing, um, but all nursing is skilled. So it doesn't mean that skilled nursing is necessarily better. It's really just a Medicare term. And there's also a new term called household model within um, memory support and assisted living. That refers, we have the household model at Riverwoods Durham. That refers to a small household, which can be 12 um, individual uh, um, communities or 12 individual homes um, that are centered around a shared kitchen and dining room. So that's what a household model is. 
listen to episode seven and it's full of details about terminology. As someone who has uh, four siblings, um, I found my conversation with Dick Edwards to be really illuminating. Dick Edwards is the retired uh, Mayo Clinic expert, and he has advised hundreds of families on aging. And let me tell you, nothing beats having the talk with your kids. You've had the sex talk probably by now. Um, it's not harder than that. Um, but it's really important once you've gotten to a certain age to have a conversation with your adult children about what you want, what's important to you. And I know that it's really hard to talk about our own mortality. I understand that. And as I said, Aging brings a lot of loss and nobody wants to anticipate their own loss. But if you want to decide what's important, if you know what's important to you, you have to use your voice. You have to use your voice if you want a choice in your later life. Because as much as you love your children and as much as they love you, Nobody can read your mind and opinions may vary in your family and your family probably doesn't have any disputes. Everyone probably gets along beautifully, but if you leave the big decisions about what kind of care you need, if it is towards end of life, what you want to do, if you leave those decisions to be decided by a group or a number of people, everyone will have a different point of view. It is a gift to your children to have this conversation and to tell them exactly what you want, um, to invite their opinion if you're interested in it, but have the conversation, have the talk now. I guarantee you they are thinking about it. So if you, take the first step and approach them and have the conversation about what's important to you, what you want to do, um, that will be clearer for everyone and easier for everyone. And if you can, involve your financial expert, involve your attorney, so that everybody has the same information at the same time. You don't want to cause more trauma or disagreement in your family. So do yourself and your family a favor and have that conversation. Now, one thing I've learned um, being involved in this uh, aging industry for over 15 years is that everyone is worried about their memory. Statistically, people fear dementia more than death because we know that the older we get, the more likely we are to get dementia. It is an age-related disease. However, many people are over-triggered by this worry. So they worry every time they misplace their keys or they forget someone's name, that this is a sign of dementia. And let me tell you that you, it's important to make sure that you pay attention to things like memory loss, but don't overreact because it could be the sign of something else. If you listen to episode eight with Dr. Maureen O'Connor, she is terrific um, and a leader in understanding dementia. Make sure you go to the doctor. If this is something that's concerning to you, get a cognitive evaluation. But one thing that everyone that is listening to this presentation can do right now is you can change your life using three lifestyle factors that are free that will help reduce your chance of dementia by 50%. Sleep, exercise, and socialization. Skip the brain games, pick up the phone and call a friend. Better yet, ask a friend to go on a walk. 
we all know that sleep is important as we age. It helps our body recover. It strengthens our brain. It helps build our immune system. Exercise is also critical. Of the interviews that I have done with physicians and national experts with seniority authority, every single one of them agrees that exercise is important. We have to keep moving our body. It helps with oxygen, heart, blood flow, lungs, and brain. So exercise regularly, get good sleep, practice good sleep hygiene, and importantly, socialize. This is really critical. And it connects to the other things we've been talking about, or I've been talking about. Um, it connects to loneliness. It connects to isolation. It is easy to stop connecting with people, especially as we get older. Families are busy. Maybe they're far away. Maybe neighbors that you've known forever have moved away. It's hard to put yourself out there and try to get new friends, but that is really important to have a happy and healthy long life. So focus your attention on building your connections and your friendships. I was so honored to have Dan Heath on Seniority Authority. This is a real gift. Dan and his brother, Chip, are multi-New York Times best-selling authors. They have written a tremendous number of books um, on business and life. And he talked with me about his new book called Upstream, which is solving problems before they happen, which I think of as pre-worrying. And since I am... Um, an expert on worrying um, and uh, a control enthusiast, this book was right up my alley. I would highly recommend it for anyone. So what he's saying is that upstream thinking means thinking ahead about problems as a way to solve them before they happen. I call this the continuing care retirement community because you come in when you're independent and the issues that you are going to have in the future because 70% of us over 65 are gonna need some form of long-term care. Those problems are solved before they start. However, he is saying that many people think of, don't wanna think about the future. They don't wanna think about problems, which makes sense, right? Because we all have enough problems. Why borrow trouble as an old adage would say? But the problem is that if you don't think ahead to the future, if you have what he calls problem blindness, you cannot see what's right in front of you, then you can't creatively and mindfully come up with a solution. And we all want to have solutions for things that we can solve, some things we can't. The other problem he identified is having tunnel vision which is, this is the way it's been. This is the way it's always going to be. I am not open to anything new. Obviously, that's not you. You're all here listening and trying to learn more about getting older. So I applaud you for that because so many people who have planned all their lives to buy a house, educate their children, take a vacation, for some reason, when it comes to retirement, they think about saving money, which is critical. But they don't think about everything else. People spend more time planning a two-week vacation than a 20-year retirement. You don't. You are curious. You want to think about that. The other barrier he noted is a lack of ownership. The people feel they don't have control. And I'll go back to what I said earlier. If you want control over the choices in your life, you need to use your voice. You need to speak up. You need to have those conversations with the important people in your life and tell them what they want, what you want, excuse me, what you want. So you have to be able to speak up to say 
what you want and invite people in to help you make sure you don't have tunnel vision, that you're thinking about different solutions. Invite people in to help you plan what your future is going to be, but do some upstream thinking. I mentioned earlier that Andrew Steele is a London writer who wrote a book called Ageless. And he is doing research into senescent cells and how to combat them. And he has had success in doing work on cellular reprogramming. Um, and what this means is his research and his work is looking at, can we reprogram cells so that as we age, we continue to age, but we have less physiological markers as we grow older. So this science is going on right now and it will have an impact on our future. Not today, but in the near future because so many people are focused on the challenges of aging. But in his book, Ageless, um, he is suggesting that there are a number of things that we can do now that will help improve our health span. Number one, quit smoking. Two, don't overeat. Three, you've heard this from me before in this presentation, exercise, get sleep. His, he also says brushing your teeth is important. Using sunscreen is important. All of these are really important small lifestyle changes you can make now that have an impact. And I find that so exciting. I find it so exciting that there are things that we can do that will change our life, that will keep us healthier, that we have the power to do every single person. So I think this is really good information for us to share. The other thing that we have, excuse me. Sorry. <clears throat> The other thing that we have control over is our mind. And more people and more um, research and folks that I talk to in my upcoming interviews, the more I realize that our mind makes a big difference in our aging process. And I just wanna tell you about one fantastic book called Breaking the Age Code by Becca Levy from Yale, um, and I have not yet interviewed her, um, but I'm working on it. And she's published research that demonstrates that our mental attitude towards how we think about aging directly impacts our experience of aging. That if we have a better mental attitude towards the fact of aging, it can actually change us at a cellular level to have a longer life by 7.5 years. It changes our, the way we think about ourselves, changes how our body reacts. So that's another conversation. However, John Leland is a phenomenal New York Times columnist. If you have the opportunity to follow him, please do. He wrote a book called Happiness is a Choice You Make. And he followed six of New York City's oldest old and covered the widest range of age and income and race and identity um, and um, from the poorest to wealthier and followed their stories and really spent a deep year building relationships with them. And he concluded that happiness is a choice. It doesn't matter. You know, some of his happiest folks are people who are at the poverty level, who have made their choice about what's important to them. They've all had strong friendships um, and they've all had losses. None of them had a perfect life, but what was different was their attitude and their experience. They were grateful for the years that they had and this is part of what I found. This is one of my earliest episodes, episode five. And it really connects to what I feel about aging. 
is that aging is a gift that not everyone has the opportunity to unwrap. We should be grateful that we are here. We should be proud of how old we are. Not embarrassed, not chagrined. We should celebrate aging, not denigrate it. And that's why I want to change the way people think about aging. We should be grateful for being here. One of my favorite episodes is Arthur Brooks, who I have read for ages. He writes for The Atlantic, and his was the first podcast that I ever listened to. Um, and he's a social psychologist. He's a professor at Harvard, one of the most popular professors at Harvard, because he teaches a course called uh, Leadership and Happiness. He just came out with a brand new book called From Strength to Strength, which is on the New York Times bestseller list right now. And he, this book, From Strength to Strength, really details his journey in understanding his purpose in the second half of life. So he is looking for a meaning and deep purpose. And he talks about cultivating your Aspen Grove. What he means by that is you look at an Aspen, which is a beautiful tree and it's often kind of by itself. But when you realize Aspens have deep, deep root structures and an Aspen Grove, all of the trees are interconnected to each other underneath where you can't see. And this is so important to understand and cultivate your own Aspen Grove of friends as you get older. And that may be different from friends that you have during your work life. He talks about the importance of avoiding isolation. He talks about intrinsic versus extrinsic goals that as you are older, as you accumulate more wisdom, um, it's important to Find goals that will feed your soul, your mind, your purpose, not necessarily feed you extrinsically. So it's not that which is extrinsic is that which is passing. So the new car, which then eventually gets old, the new clothes, which eventually get out of date. The, what he's talking about is finding something deeper and finding something that helps you, as the Japanese say, ikigai, that helps you get up in the morning. You need a purpose. Everyone needs a purpose. And you might be at the point where your purpose was building a business and that business is done, has been sold. Your purpose was raising a family. That family is launched. You still have purpose. There's still a reason for you to be here. You have to find what that is. He also suggests making your weakness your strength. By calling out that which you are not good at and focusing on that and learning from that. So it's a fantastic book. I highly recommend it. Um, that's my synopsis so far. Um, of Seniority Authority, really, really quick um, highlights for you. Um, we have recorded 45 episodes to date, and we have new episodes that drop every two weeks. But what I want to know from you right now in the Q&A is what do you want to know about aging? What question is on your mind? Who would you like to hear from? I am tracking down experts authors, thought leaders, and I really want to make this a service to everyone. But in order to do that, I want to understand what's on your mind. So pop a question or a topic in the Q&A that we can then research. And also, how can we improve on this? Do you listen to podcasts? Is there another place we can get this information to you? How can we communicate this to more people? Do you believe in this mission of changing the way people think about aging? I want to know what you think. So my questions for you are, 
who do you want to hear from next? What expert do you have a crush on? Do you really want to um, hear from? What topic do you and your friends talk about when you get together for coffee? What's on your mind? What are the, what are the things you want to know? I want to ask, will you listen to Seniority Authority? Will you jump on a podcast, a brand new thing, and be one of the folks that are in the forefront of the new ideas about aging? And would you share this with someone you know? We're a brand new podcast, and the podcast world is very crowded. Uh, so we need all the support and all of the listeners that we can get. And as a nonprofit, it's hard for us. We can't compete with the, the big guns that spend a lot of money. So if each of you listen and subscribe and tell one other person, it would make a huge difference to us. And the more people we have listening, the more experts will agree to be on the show. So that's my request to you. If you want to know how to listen to a podcast, it's very easy. Look for that icon, the little purple icon on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Go to that icon. There's a picture of me in this chair. Hit my face and that will subscribe you. Um, if you want more detailed instructions, I'm going to include those in the recording and as an attachment to everybody that signed up. Okay, this is a this is a handful of the books that I've been uh, reading for this. Um, but now we're going to go to questions because we have, I think, um, yeah, a little more than ten minutes. So. I see some questions popping into the Q&A. Um, please add my add questions as we keep going. And I'm just going to go through and start, start uh, answering them. Um, OK. I got a question. Um, does uh, CCRCs, does Riverwoods have an area to have a small raised garden? Yes, we do. Every community at Riverwoods has raised garden beds. Um, another question, how does my long-term care insurance relate to my CCRC fees? Really good question. If you have long-term care insurance, um, long-term care will pay you back when you are in um, healthcare. So when you're in the health center. So it will pay you back when you transition to assisted living, or nursing care or memory support. If you are interested, please bring your first page of your long-term care insurance contract with you when you can come to Riverwoods or to another CCRC. There are many different contracts and based on your contract, we will tell you specifically how that answers. Uh, question, is a tax deductible portion of fees applied to both state and federal income tax. Um, it is primarily federal income tax uh, that this applies to, but different states may have different rules. So in New Hampshire, it's federal. Um, okay, great question here. Do the Harvard researchers also look at the long-lived people of the so-called blue zones? Um, Harvard, the Harvard research was Boston-based, Pat. So they didn't look at the blue zones. Dan Bootner did a great study on blue zones and he's written a book. Um, uh, for those of you who are interested, he looked at the oldest old across the world and he comes up with a number of things that connects the oldest old together. Um, so uh, it's a great book, I highly recommend it. Um, it is where the term ikigai comes into play. It's the first time I'd heard that. And that's the Japanese term for a reason to get up in the morning. So um, Blue Zones is a different study, but has um, many of the same messages. Can Riverwoods help a potential resident get all of that, and get rid of all of that unnecessary stuff before moving in? Absolutely. We can help you with that. Uh, does Riverwoods have offer activities or classes to help one maintain their independence 
So, oh, uh, so uh, nursing care is postponed. Yes. If you move into a CCRC like Riverwoods, um, we have an abundance of fitness classes, um, of activities. Um, you will have a very rich social life and um, people that live in CCRCs typically will live five years longer than people who don't. So um, it is a way to increase and maintain your independence. Uh, another one, I've been reading, enjoying the book, Gift of Years. It's a great book by Joan Chittister. I don't know how to pronounce her last name about the positive aspects of aging. And now I can't talk. Do you have any book recommendations? Absolutely. Look at the pile that I am. That is my arm on this pile. I have um, two bookcases full of book recommendations. Um, I will um, attach a bibliography to the recording that goes out because there's lots and lots of books. From Strength to Strength by Arthur Brooks is top of my list. Um, certainly Being Mortal by Atul Gawande. Everyone should read that book, every single person, um, and a number of other books. Uh, does volunteering in the community help with socialization? for those whose families and friends are distant. Absolutely. Not only does volunteering help um, with the reducing isolation, but it increases your endorphin level. So people who volunteer and help other people are happier, statistically. If you are engaged in the process of helping another human being, um, it, works on your brain chemistry and increases your happiness level. Um, who was the author and title of the book regarding the attitude of getting old? So Breaking the Age Code is by Becca Levy. She is from Yale University. Um, I highly recommend that book as well as Ageism Unmasked which is by Tracy Gendron, as well as um, another book by Ashton Applewhite called This Chair Rocks. Ashton Applewhite is a leader in the topic of ageism and how we are all participating in ageism, even though we don't realize it. And Tracy Gendron with Ageism Unmasked is talking about the same thing. Um, okay, some information about growing older as a widow would be helpful. I would point you to Sarah Zeth Geber, um, who wrote the definitive book on solo aging. Um, she talks about the challenge of socialization, isolation, and making choices if you are a solo ager. Um, we have a question um, about how can we best, let's see. Uh, one question is, if one is stuck on finding one's purpose, who can best help ask the important questions? And when does one know what that real purpose is? That's a really good question. It's very hard to find your purpose. I would highly recommend From Strength to Strength by Arthur Brooks as one guidebook of how we are going to age and how we can think about purpose. And I would also recommend looking at Harvard's uh, uh, lifespan uh, research. They have a roadmaps program, which is now open to the public. Uh, another question, how can we best identify primary care physicians who will not see us as Medicare billable in 15 minute time slots? Okay, it's a little, uh, I, will, I will look into that, but I will tell you that there is a growing number of physicians that are um, now called concierge medicine. So these are physicians who do not accept insurance, but you pay them a yearly rate 
and they will see you as often as you need. So that is an option that is open to many folks. Um, so the looking into concierge medicine is what I would um, refer to there. Um, what is the importance of a multi-age community? Segregating us as we age seems unhealthy. So this is a this is a question that many people think about, but when you think about a continuing care retirement community, the residents are generally 60, you have to be 62 or better to enter, but you are surrounded by staff of all different ages. Uh, we have um, servers who are it's their first job, uh, they're high school students. We have people at every different age and stage of their career. And I understand that some people don't like to be within the same age, but when you think you have people from 60 to 100, that's a pretty wide and diverse uh, age group. The advantage of living in a community with older adults is that you do have people to connect with who have the same time frame. You're not trying to connect with people who are working every day, so that type of thing. Another question, what is the best way to get out and socialize if you're not used to it? I would say volunteer. We have such a challenge right now in our country. We have fewer people in the workforce than ever before. Every single nonprofit organization is looking for help. You can decide what's important to you. SPCA, homeless, kids, mentoring, the earth, green initiatives, arts and culture, history, science. There are limitless opportunities to get involved in. And I find if you are shy, it is easier to volunteer for something that you have a connection with that is not totally focused on yourself. Um, it's a little easier. Great question. What is there a cost to subscribe to the podcast? Absolutely not. It's completely free. So please sign up. <laughs> um, got a recommendation on a book, Younger Next Year. That's an excellent book. I highly recommend it. I have a copy of it right here in the office. Um, Younger Next Year is by Chris Crowley and Henry Lodge. Excellent book. Um, uh, would it be possible to sift through the confusing and conflicting nutrition information? What are the best choices for us as we age? I'm going to take that as a question for a future podcast and get a nutrition leader to talk about that. Um, uh, I think that's really important. Um, okay, uh, what part of successful aging does faith play? Um, if you read the Blue Zones book, you will see that um, every, uh, within those five different communities, the oldest old, faith and being part of something larger than yourself is really important to people's um, successful aging. Uh, okay, I think seniors in assisted living need a job, need to care for something. How does Riverwoods do this? So um, Riverwoods has independent residents, residents in assisted living, um, residents uh, in memory support. Many of the enterprises on our campuses are run by our community members, by our residents. So they run the library, the newsletter, the TV station. They have generally um, 60 different committees. So they are very much in control of their lives and have a say in how, um, how their lives are, are being led. Okay, we have a fan. I appreciate seniority authority. I've recommended it to multiple fans. Thank you very much, Cynthia. I've re recommended Dan Bootner, Joy Laverde. I'm going to write your name down, and requested resources for solo agers. I'm very concerned about my family members and friends who don't have financial resources to 
qualify for Riverwoods? What can they do for their future care? So I would say, don't assume that you can't afford Riverwoods. Definitely take a look and have a conversation. Um, especially I would look at Riverwoods Manchester, which is a type B contract, which is a whole different conversation. Um, but we have a very innovative 70% refundable contract, which is available within your, to use within your lifetime. So please look at that, talk to Katie. Um, that's an opportunity. Um, we are all working in this industry to make what we provide more affordable um, and as affordable as possible. So those are my two recommendations. Um, okay, um, will you send out, yes, this is being recorded. And it, when we send out the email, we will send a link to seniority authority. Um, question, uh, speak to your too young for a CCRC versus don't wait too long. Okay, Tom and Heather, that's a great, Great question. Let me tell you, because of the expansion and the explosion of older adults, CCRCs are developing long wait lists. Don't wait. Come now. You can plan ahead. You can look in your 60s and have a plan. Um, if you decide Riverwoods an, is an option for you, we have a 4% guaranteed um, interest on your deposit. You can put a deposit down for five years, eight years, there's no limit. Make a plan for your future because the future is crowded and you want to ensure that you have made your plan. Um, there's no such thing as too early, in my opinion. Um, question, will you be talking about long-term care another day? We expected to hear something about it today. So today was um, a recap of seniority authority. Um, I would uh, recommend you listen to the episode with Cindy Martin on it to talk about long-term care. Um, if Elizabeth, if you specifically uh, provide some detail about what you're looking for, we can have another event specifically about long-term care. The one thing we need to know, or you need to know, is that 70% of people over 65 will need some form of long-term care during their lifetime. We don't know how much, but long-term care is a factor. It is generally not covered by Medicare unless you have a three-night qualifying stay in a hospital, and that will provide you 100 days. So it's important to make a plan for long-term care. Um, last question, use of CBD, need an expert's advice. Um, that's a really good question. Um, right now, we don't have any reliable medical um, research or data on CBD, um, but um, we are always looking. It's a topic of interest to a lot of folks. Um, so we'll look into that. Uh, can residents and independent living volunteer at the memory memory support at Riverwoods? Yes, absolutely. Um, okay, I think I'm getting to the end of these, uh, Katie. Um, and thank you, uh, Kay, for your recommendation on Ronald Huffman for nutrition. Um, there was one more question just yeah. for uh, when you were talking about blue zone. Someone asked, what is a blue zone or what is blue zone? Great. Thank you. So Dan Bootner, which is B-U-E-T-T-N-E-R, wanted to look at the places in the world where there were clusters of the oldest old people were her living well beyond 100. He identified five areas in the world where there were these clusters of the oldest old. He named them blue zones. And he did extensive research about what factors all five of them had in common. And he identified a uh, healthy diet, movement, uh, faith, um, being part of a larger community, and something else that that he borrowed because one of the terms was in uh, Japan, ikigai, which is a reason to get up in the morning as what the um, 
the oldest old all had in common. And he has a book, he has uh, recipe guides. He, I think he has a website. Um, so I would look up bluezone.com. And I think, I think that is it at almost, I think 10 after, <laughs> I'm not sure. I think that's, I think that's all of our, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so Cynthia says, uh, Dan has done a great cookbook and has a challenge out there. So definitely look into Dan. And there was one more question just about the models of the communities, how that works. Um, sure. So I would encourage you to um, reach out to someone at the community. Um, for example, I can answer that for Manchester um, to give you more detail on sort of the specifics of the Riverwoods communities and everything that you would be interested in. Yes, we have all of our Riverwoods communities are not for profit. Um, and Riverwoods Exeter and Riverwoods Durham are type A contracts and Riverwoods uh, Manchester is a type B contract. We have more information on that. All three of our communities have um, refundable one-time entrance fees. So that means you put down a one-time entrance fee and when you leave the community or if you pass away, a portion of that entrance fee is returned to your estate. This allows us to have a state or you to have a state preservation so that you can make a plan for yourself and leave money for to whomever you designate. Riverwoods Manchester has a very unusual contract, the only one of its kind in New England, which allows you to take the non-refundable portion of your entrance fee and use it during your lifetime when you are in healthcare. So that's one of its kind in New England it makes the community much more affordable uh, for folks and it's something worth looking into. The most important thing is to make a plan and to not assume that these communities are out of reach. Do the research, take a look. And as Katie said, we are here to help. And actually our contact information is on the next slide. So you have information about all three communities. Um, so feel free to write this information down. Otherwise, you will be getting a uh, recording as well as a link to uh, how to uh, listen to a podcast. Um, so check your email for that. Um, otherwise, it does look like there are no more questions. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Kathleen. Um, I think that was a really, really wonderful webinar and it seems from the comments that everyone enjoyed it and it definitely was a lot of useful information. Um, so with that being said, uh, we'll say goodbye and feel free to join us for our next webinar. Join us for a lunch and learn about our communities um, and just go to one of our pages to check out our next events, okay? Thank you very much, everyone. And uh, Elizabeth, I will reach out to you separately. Thanks so much. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.